Today, we're gonna to be making a passion fruit, carbonated, dry hopped mead. So let's get started. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I'm excited to share this new experiment with you all. Um, I have here a gallon of mead that I have, it's been sitting for a little while. Um, the recipe for it is here. Basically, it was about, I believe, two, uh, from my memory is right, two pounds of honey, and it was uh, orange blossom honey at the time. Um, and of course everything else there, my brain is not remembering everything that's in it. But uh, I have a sample of it here, I'll get to that in a moment. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put some, um, some passion fruit flavoring into this mead. Now I have this from Amaretti, I've used it before on the channel, no surprise. Anyways, I'm gonna be flavoring this with passion fruit. That's not the surprising thing that's gonna be different. Um, I want to actually dry hop this mead. So I'm going to be adding, after the passion fruit has added its flavor, I'll be adding these Simcoe brand hops because uh, they have some interesting flavor profiles to add to this, like passion fruit, berry, pine, earth, uh, citrus, bubble gum. I think all of that will go really well with this mix. And then once we are finished um, flavoring and dry hopping, we're going to actually carbonate this thing, uh, bottle carbonate. We're not gonna actually go through the, uh, the like kegging operation. Anyways, let's get started. The way I'm flavoring this, because this mead is finished, um, I'm just gonna be adding it and tasting it as it goes along to decide how much flavor I wanna add. So what I'm gonna do real fast is I'm gonna add my flavor until I'm comfortable with the strength of the flavor, and then I'll tell you how much I added. Okay, so a couple of important bits of information. First of all, this thing started at 1.065, and after the primary, it finished at 1.000, it fermented out. Now, I took a gravity reading after adding my passion fruit flavoring, and it actually has not been affected at all. The gravity is still 1.000. We have added two ounces of the passion fruit flavoring. I kind of went, I added more to it than I thought I needed to because when this ferments, because it will again, I have not stabilized it or anything, um, the, the flavor might be lost a little bit. So I'd rather it be too flavorful right now than not flavorful enough. If it all ferments out, we can always add more. However, not worried about it. So um, I'll pour that back in in a moment, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little uh, hops, basically a Tootsie Roll that I've made with some a cheesecloth and stuff, and this is gonna be like a hop bomb. I'm gonna put this into here, excuse me, and we are going to taste test it basically every probably 12 hours to a day to see if that's hoppy enough of a flavor. Hops are very strong, are a very strong flavor. So if you, um, if you do this, make sure you're not just leaving them on for a long time and not ever taste testing. So I'm gonna get my hop bomb, put it in here. Again, these are the Simcoe brand hops, YCR14, um, and they are very strong. And uh, I will, Pour this in here in a moment. Let me interject real fast because I forgot to, you know, cue in one important thing. Um, before I tell you everything, I put two ounces of the uh, passion fruit flavoring in. So let's taste test it and I'll tell you kind of what I'm getting from it. So the mead itself is already dry. The passion fruit flavoring gives it some sweetness to, um, to hold on to, but also you get these floral notes. I really like the honey um, character that's popping through this. It's very smooth, there's not a lot of alcohol burn or anything, so I'm very impressed with that. I think it's gonna be really nice. And two ounces is just enough, and I believe that I'll lose some of the flavor because of the secondary fermentation aspect. But um, I wanted to interject with a taste test because I forgot to do that. Okay, so I've got everything back inside. We're gonna take our airlock, which is all the way back here. I'm gonna put it on here and we're gonna let it go through its secondary fermentation now because it's probably gonna go through a little bit of fermentation slash age on um, this new flavors. Here we are four days later after this has been sitting with the um, a little hop bag on it and uh, I'm here to taste it. We're gonna find out if it's hoppy enough. I've been taste testing it each day basically to see and I think it is hoppy enough, but here's the taste test. Ooh, yeah. that. The, the hop flavor is a nice extra dimension on top of what we have. We're not really sweet, but I think that's fine because th there's a little sweetness from the flavoring, but there's not a ton. What I'm uh, probably most excited for is 
uh, carbonating this thing. I think a carbonated passion fruit uh, dry hopped mead is gonna be really, really good. So uh, I am, I'm excited to do this. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. So our next step for us is actually going to be taking and moving this into this new container to get it off of any sediment. There's a little sediment here at the bottom that I don't wanna get in my brew, uh, ultimately. So I'm gonna rack this off real fast and then we're gonna, um, well actually I'll do this. Probably easier to do it this way. We're gonna take this glass carboy right here, which is what we're gonna rack into here in a moment. And I am going to add a fifth of this, or an ounce of this priming sugar, which is what we normally use for uh, most beer kits come with this, I should say. So I'm gonna use an ounce of this, which is 28 grams. I've already done the math on that. And uh, we're gonna add this straight to this container so that we can just dump right on top of it. And that will help us carbonate this mead. So let me go ahead and add our, our sugar in, our priming sugar, for the bottling process. All right, I have it in here. This is our priming sugar, what will allow us to carbonate. And now I'm going to uh, rack this off of here and into here. Okay, I had to quit a little early on this one because there is a lot of junk here at the bottom. You can see, uh, I didn't want that, of course, in our brew. I went ahead and mixed in our priming sugar. So this is what we have here. The sugar looks like it's all mixed in and everything. There's a little degassing that happened as well. Um, and that was mainly because the, I don't think I degassed this thing, really any. So, uh, and the yeast might've got excited with new sugar. So we're now going to bottle these into my beer bottles, not using any wine bottles, cause this is gonna be carbonated. And yeah, so let me, uh, let me bottle these and then, on, uh, and then we'll talk about the next part. There we go, everything is bottled. Had the perfect amount, just enough to fill my own cup. Now, um, I normally do labels for these, I haven't got them done yet. I am going to put these away, I'm gonna put a temporary label on so I know what they are, and I'm gonna put them away for a couple weeks, and we're gonna see how they carbonate, and um, we'll come back and do a taste test. So here's that taste test right now. It has been roughly about two weeks since I went ahead and uh, put my priming sugar into this. We're gonna see now how well carbonated it is. I already opened it up. It did give a little sound, so it's done. Um, I will say that I have labels for these and I finished making them and I went to print them off, but they're not done yet. So this is what the label looks like. Uh, I'm, you know, I think it'll be kind of fun to put on there. And if I make more of this meat, I'll put it, I'll continue to make those labels. So let's go ahead and pour some. Yeah, we got a little carbonation. I like the look of this thing. This thing looks really nice. You can see in there, maybe, you can see it's got a little bit of that flocculation on the side, which is the bubbling, which is of course carbonation. Smells very similar, of course, to what it did before. I think the big difference here is gonna be, it's gonna be more, more uh, refreshing, hopefully with some uh, carbonation. Definitely get some passion fruit. You get a little bit of the hops. It's not like an IPA kind of hop situation, and I kind of like that. I like IPAs sometimes, not all the time. Yeah, and there's honey character. This thing smells great, let's taste it. Oh, I am a fan. Okay, so this thing, again, because it's so, well, because it's very three-dimensional between carbonation, uh, passion fruit, your hops, you have some acidity, you have sweetness from the honey, you have this passion fruit, which is like a sour-ish side. Um, there's a lot of complexity in this mead. Man, I really like this. Um, it's pretty light too. I mean, we're sitting, I think, at about a 8% mead, I think. Yeah, somewhere in that realm. I'll make sure and put it down here. But this thing, it's very, very good. I'd recommend you try it yourself. Of course, uh, you can use real pre uh, passion fruits, but um, I, I didn't have that, don't really have access to them super easily right now. This thing is fantastic. I will 100% be making more of this in the future. Um, I made a one gallon batch. I'll probably up it to make a five gallon because this could be a standard for me. And the hopping side's really easy. I could switch out the hops for some different ones. Um, these are these Simcoe hops that I was using. Still, very, very good stuff. 
I really like this. I would give this, if I was just giving out of a 10 scale, this is probably a solid eight and a half, almost nine. And uh, it's very, very great for summertime. Very refreshing, the cold, and this helps. The carbonation is super nice. I definitely recommend you trying it yourself. So, if you wanna make this mead, you can check out the recipe below. If you wanna support the channel, please do this. Please go and hit like and subscribe. That helps me out big time. I appreciate um, the support. You guys help me continue to make content. And if you like this stuff and comment something below, then I know if you like this content or if you don't. Uh, of course, we're always evolving trying to make, or I'm always evolving trying to make better content for you. So make sure you hit like, subscribe, and I hope you guys will maybe look at making this mead. Uh, comment down below what kind of mead you think I should make next, because I'd love to hear about that. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will see you next time with um, something hopefully even better. As always, cheers.